Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, a core for Maths A level video on the binomial theorem. In this video we will deal with the core four uh, aspects of the binomial theorem, namely uh, when uh, n is a negative or fractional amount. As always, for more help with your GCC or A level studies, do see YouTube, Twitter or Google+. Okay, so our second tutorial, applicable for the Edexcel course, but would uh, be fine for any of the Maths A-level courses. And just to say clearly what Edexcel want, here's what they want for Core 2, and we covered off what was in yellow uh, in Tutorial 1. Uh, and now for Core 4, we need to know the binomial series for any rational n. Okay, and we're going to work on that uh, mostly today, and we're going to deal with this part here, in particular this part, in one more video to come. Okay, so... The binomial theorem. What was that again? Well, from the last video, you should remember that the binomial theorem allows you to expand uh, something that looks like 1 plus x to a power. And it gives you a formula for expanding it. Now, to date, all we have uh, been happy with expanding is 1 plus x to a power of a positive integer. For example, uh, 17. Or we've even done stuff like 1 plus 3x to the power of 4. And we've even done stuff like 2 plus x to the power of, let's say, 11. And we've just made it look like a 1 plus something uh, by dividing by 2. So, so far, we have used the binomial theorem, okay, for positive integers. And let's just, before we move on, let's quickly think what that meant. Looking at the expansion formula here, what that meant is at some point you will eventually reach your last value when you reach, say, for example, in this case, x to the 17. And you will stop, you will have nothing after that. Or if it was x to the 4 or x to the 11. And it will be a terminating sequence, it will finish. Also, this coefficient here because of the way you're subtracting, eventually you will um, have a zero coefficient here, and so uh, nothing after it will um, be shown, so there will be no terms after it. So having a positive integer meant that the t sequence or the terms of this uh, expansion were finite, there were only so many of them. For example, 1 plus x squared, if we do that one, we know it's 1 plus 2x plus x squared x squared, right? And so it's got three terms. It's a finite sequence. And 1 plus x cubed, well, we should be able to do that quickly. It would be 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus x cubed, right? And it's got four terms. Okay, and similarly, something where n is a positive integer, like 100, will have 101 terms and it will stop. So you can see the pattern. Now, here's the big idea for core four. Suppose this n was a fraction, or suppose this n was a negative integer. For example, n was a half, or for example, n was equal to minus 3, or something of that nature. Would it still be valid? Well, it turns out the expansion is still valid um, in certain cases. Now, let's think what would happen. Because n is a half, um, you could imagine you never get to a point where you stop because this coefficient will never be zero. A half, my, uh, a half times a half minus one over two factorial, you'll never get zero here and similarly for any future term. Similarly with negatives, because you keep making this number more negative, it never actually becomes zero. So these terms go on forever. So this, uh, for any particular value here, this x to the power of it could be 100, a million, it will never stop. Now, this is where this condition here becomes really important. This effectively is a geometric sequence. It's 1 plus something x plus something x squared plus something x cubed, okay? And so for that to converge, or for that to have any meaning, to, for that to become something we can work out, this here, whatever we have in the bracket, the 1 plus whatever that is, 
its modulus must be less than 1. If it is not, then the, we can't even write this expansion. If it is, we're fine and we can deal with fractional and negative um, uh, indices. Okay, so we're going to do a few examples, but you must always state um, that uh, whatever's in the brackets here, its modulus is less than 1 for it to be valid. You can't write something down without saying when it is valid. So let's have a go at these questions. Example 1. Use the binomial expansion to find the first four terms of the following. Firstly, how does that look like a binomial theorem? Well, if we write it as 1 plus x to the power of minus 1, all of a sudden it looks slightly like that where n is negative 1. So we would write down here that our n is negative 1, just to keep track. And it wants the first four terms, so let's just substitute in here. We'd have 1 plus negative 1 for the n times x, plus negative 1, negative 2 over 2 factorial times x squared, plus negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, over 3 factorial x cubed. And we'd have more terms, but we're not going to write them down. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 terms there. So let's tidy this up. This would be 1, subtract x, minus 1 times, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, over 2 factorial is 1, so it'd be plus x squared. This here would be uh, negative 6 over 6, which is negative x cubed. Okay, and we get ourselves that as the following, as the um, first four terms. Now, I do write a plus dot 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 just to say there are more terms. At this point, you must state um, the x for which you are allowed to do this. Because this is a negative number, you are restricted. This is only true when the modulus of this number, the modulus of x, is strictly less than 1 and please make sure you write that down otherwise you aren't allowed to write it down. Example 2 let's do a similar thing here uh, the square root of 1 subtract 3x firstly let's make it look something of that form so we could obviously write this as 1 subtract 3x to the power of a half okay so our n in this case is a half and we want the first four terms again so let's just proceed as we did before. 1 plus n is a half, so write that in brackets, a half, times our uh, x, our, which in this case is negative 3x. So negative 3x plus a half times minus a half over 2 factorial negative 3x squared plus a half times minus 3 over, uh, sorry, times minus a half, or negative a half, multiplied by negative 3 over 2, all over 3 factorial, negative 3x cubed. Okay, and now it's just a tidying up game, where we can type fractions in our calculator. This would be 1, a half times negative 3 is negative 3 over 2x, a half times negative half is minus a negative a quarter over 2 is negative an eighth. And then this here is going to be positive 9x squared. So this is negative an eighth multiplied by positive 9x squared. So it would be negative 9 eighths x squared. And this one here might take us a little bit more to work out. So we've got a half multiplied by negative a half multiplied by negative 3 over 2. And all of that divided by 3 factorial, which is 6. And then we're going to multiply that by negative 27 here from when we expand this out. And this is 27x, negative 27x cubed. So we're going to get ourselves here, in fact, a negative, And it's going to be negative 27 over 16x cubed plus dot dot dot. Now make sure as always we state when this is valid for it's valid okay when this here 
its modulus is ne is less than one. So when the modulus of negative three x is less than one, taking the modulus of negative three x is the same as taking the modulus uh, of three x when that's less than one. And we must always write this in its final form, and that's to say where the modulus of x is therefore less than a third because 3 is a positive number so we can divide it by 3 so it's when the modulus of x is less than a third we must write it in that form to show its validity okay another couple of examples just to tie this up if we had to find the binomial expansion of this you might want to have a go at this one yourself and check you can do it it's quite straightforward so you may want to pause the video here and check you can do it I'll go through in a few seconds Okay, we want to get up to x cubed, so we're going to have 1 plus a third um, multiplied by negative x. Remember, our n is equal to a third plus a third times negative 2 thirds taken away 1 over 2 factorial negative x squared plus a third multiplied by negative 2 thirds multiplied by negative 5 thirds all over 3 factorial negative x all cubed plus dot 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 now it's just a tidying up game this here would be 1 this here would be negative a third x this here it's time to get the calculator out a third multiplied by negative 2 thirds divided by 2 uh, and then times this would be positive x squared when you when you work that out that would therefore be equal to negative a ninth x squared. And this one here, this would be a third times negative two thirds times negative five thirds divided by three factorial, which is six. And then you're going to multiply it by negative x cubed. So you're actually here going to get yourself a negative five eighty ones x cubed. Write plus dot 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 to say there are more terms and you must state where your uh, expansion is valid. It's valid for the negative x less than 1 which is the same as negative x is less than 1. You can't simplify any more than that and you're done. Okay next one we want to expand this out here Firstly, write it as 1 plus 4x to the power of negative 2. So our n in this case is negative 2. And we want to expand this out. So we'd have 1 plus negative 2 multiplied by 4x plus negative 2, negative 3 over 2 factorial 4x squared plus negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 all over 3 factorial multiplied by 4x cubed plus dot dot dot. Again, this is just a tidying up game then. This would be 1, subtract 8x. This here would be, um, you'd end up having 16 times 3, or 2, negative 2 times negative 3 is 6, divided by 2 is, is 3, times by 16, you'd have yourself plus 48x squared, and this one here, you'd end up with a negative um, 2 times 3 times 4 divided by 6 and times 4 cubed. You're going to get yourself there, 2, 5, 6, x cubed, when you tidy that up, plus dot, dot, dot. And you must state for when this is valid. So this is valid if the modulus of 4x is less than 1, and you can divide by 4, that's the modulus of x is less than a quarter. So you must state that to get your marks in the exam. And we've done all the type of examples now. I just want to show you one particular example where you use um, binomial theorem to make an approximation. So it says, find this expansion up to x cubed by substituting x is 0 0.01, find the suitable approximation to root 2. Sometimes the exam questions look like this. So firstly, let's write this. 1 subtract 2x the power of a half. So our n in this case is a half and we're going to expand this out. 1 
plus a half. Okay, multiplied by negative 2x plus a half multiplied by negative a half over 2 factorial negative 2x squared plus a half multiplied by negative a half multiplied by negative 3 over 2 over 3 factorial negative 2x cubed plus dot dot dot. Now it's a tidying up game so this would be 1 subtract x if you work this out here it would be uh, equal to negative a half x squared and if you work this out here it would be a half times a negative a half times negative 3 over 2 divided by 3 factorial which is 6 multiplied uh, by uh, negative 8 so we get ourselves there negative half so this would be negative a half x cubed plus dot 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 and state when it's valid is valid for negative 2x less than 1 i.e. modulus of 2x less than 1 i.e. modulus of x less than a half so you must state that okay so we've got this expansion now and it tells us to let x equal 0 0.01 in here presumably so what would we get we would get 1 subtract 2 times 0 0.01 all to the half and for our purposes it would be equal to 1 subtract 0 0.01 minus a half times 0 0.01 squared minus a half times 0 0.01 cubed using this expansion there are other terms but we're going to ignore x4 or higher okay now let's actually go ahead and work these out here we can actually work this out because this is going to be equal to 1 subtract 0 0.01 subtract Um, here would be 0 0.0005 and here would be 0 0.0005 okay and on this side what would we get well on this side 1 minus this is going to be equal to 0 0.98 to the power of a half which is the square root of 0 0.98 okay so the square root of 0 0.98 is equal to this thing here which if I work out so if I work that out there I get myself 0 0.989994.95 now this thing here I can write that if I'm clever, 0.98, I could actually write that as the square root of 98 over 100, okay, and that's equal to 0.989495, okay, and this therefore is the square root of 98 over the square root of 100 using our thirds, which is that. Now you should keep going down the page here, but I've run out of space, so I'm going to go over here. Now the square root of 98, you can write the square root of 2 times the square root of 49, writing that all over 10 equals 0.989495. The square root of 49 is 7, so we have root 2, and then this is 7 over 10, so we've got 7 tenths root 2 is equal to 0 0.9899. 495 and therefore root 2 must be this 0 0.989945 divided by 7 tenths so if you divide that by 0.7 we get ourselves an approximation for root 2 as 1.41421357 and it turns out that is quite a decent approximation so that is about as hard as an exam question can get on this topic and 
just to finish off, read chapter 3, page 23 to 28, and complete exercise 3A, tuning in for the next video. Thank you for watching.